Thank you for staying with us on Y254 News Updates. And so we get to the point of our program whereby we get to talk about issues affecting people. And tonight we talk about autism and awareness. And with me in studio is Dr. Lincoln Kamau, an autism expert with the Autism Lights, and Jessica Hiller, who is a consultant of uh, under the Autism Lights. Thank you very much, guys, for really finding time to talk about uh, these with us. And my first question will go to you, Dr. Lincoln. Can you define the autism disorder for people? probably who have no idea about what it is. Yeah, autism is a developmental disorder that affects speech, language, and social skills development. Mm -hmm. We human beings are born to be social. Mm -hmm. When kids are born in their, when kids are in their mother's stomach, I mean mothers talk to them and they kind of respond. Mm -hmm. So when kids are born just two, three, four days, they start mm -hmm. focusing on their mother's faces. Mm -hmm. I mean, as they develop, they are able to learn language, they are able to look at their mom's faces and smiles. Kids with autism don't do that. They don't learn how to smile, they don't learn how to socially communicate, okay. they don't acquire language. Mm -hmm. So that's what autism is. Okay. So for you, uh, Jessica, what is the autism light? What do you do? What, what does this organization focus on as far as autism is concerned? Uh, Autism Lights is a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. that's based out of Boston, Massachusetts mm -hmm. in the United States and most of their work is done here in Kenya mm -hmm. and they're focusing on bringing awareness about autism as well as science-based uh, services and resources to people here in Kenya who have children with autism and have autism themselves. Okay, as I was going through my research preparing for this show, uh, I got to look at uh, different uh, comments or reviews by people that there, there's no known cause of autism, but mm -hmm. every disease, every disorder, everything has something that causes it. What would you say is a cause for? Yeah, we really don't know what causes autism, mm -hmm. but there is a hint mm -hmm. autism could be genetic. Mm -hmm. And the reason we are, have a hint this could be genetic, mm -hmm. there are five times as more boys with autism than girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, research, I mean, research in the United States on ge genetics is also has identified about a hundred and another research identified about 600 gene mutations okay. that could be related to autism. Mm -hmm. So we are heading to that hint as autism being genetically related. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, is it probably related to, does it have any other relation to any other diseases or does it, are there risk factors to a person living with autism? I mean, before they are born, there are no risk factors. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tell parents all the time, nothing a mother does before a child is born, mm -hmm. after the child is born, mm -hmm. or yeah, nothing a mother does before a child is born, when she's pregnant, or after the child is born that causes autism. Mm -hmm. So there are really no risk factors, because mm -hmm. I mean, I hear people saying, probably my child got autism because I was drinking when they were pregnant, I mm -hmm. was living in this polluted area. Autism affects everyone in regardless of socioeconomic status. Yeah, we know kids who live in Mathare with autism, we know kids who live in Boston, New York with autism. So there is, we know kids who live in Shanghai with autism. So it's a common ailment everywhere in the world. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for you, Jessica, for the time that you've been uh, serving under the Autism Lights organization, what, has, what is your experience with the autism, uh, as far as the autism uh, disorder is concerned? What growth is there? Because there are time whereby people would say that these kids born with autism are probably these, it's, it's, it's witchcraft. Sometimes people say these people are cursed and all those things. So how far are we with people having the knowledge and knowing that it's not that these people probably are not supposed to be here so how have you been able to deal how have you been able to deal with all that um, I mean I think I have noticed and found that there are a lot of myths uh, surrounding autism and a lot of people that really don't understand it okay uh, but it's definitely not a death sentence mm -hmm. you know uh, you can d diagnose autism by the age of two mm -hmm. and then as soon as you get services you can kids with autism can make significant progress and mm -hmm. really be able to live successful and productive lives. Okay, so can you say that people, uh, parents with uh, such kids are now coming out and saying that I have a, uh, an autistic child and I'm willing to help them. How would you say the numbers are compared to times when people would prefer to lock such kids inside the houses and not expose them to the public? I mean, that is our main goal mm -hmm. with uh, Autism Lights, is mm -hmm. to bring more and more awareness so that people feel comfortable sharing their experience and 
being able to get services okay. because the earlier you get services, the more chances that your child has to succeed. Okay. So now, uh, Dr. Lincoln. Yes. So, what about the signs and symptoms? What are the signs of symptoms of uh, the autistic disorder? What can a parent look out for to be able to notice probably early and see how to help their child? Yeah, autism can easily be diagnosed by the age of two and three. Mm -hmm. The first sign is lack of communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a three, five, four year old child who has zero words, who is not communicating, who is not babbling, seek, seek an evaluation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a child who is, again, who is not giving eye contact, a child who isn't smiling, a child who, is, who isn't interacting or praying with other kids, again, again seek, a t seek an evaluation from a pediatrician. So those are the key tell signs. One, lack of eye contact. Two, the inability to communicate. There are also some symptoms like stereotypical, what we call stereotypical behaviors, like walking on tiptoes. I mean, hand flapping. Those are the key, key signs of autism. Okay. Yeah. So is, is it cure? Is it treatable? Can autism be cured? Yeah, autism can be. Cure is a very strong word. Mm -hmm. Autism cannot be cured. Mm -hmm. And I really would like to stress this about curing because there are a lot of quack therapists going out there and mm -hmm. telling people autism can be cured. Mm -hmm. No, autism cannot be cured, but autism can effectively be treated. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the United States where I, w I work most of the year, mm -hmm. I have, I have, I've been doing this in over 20 years. And we have gotten to treat kids who come to us at two, three, four, five, and they are now productive citizens in the community. Mm -hmm. I just there is an individual I have been working with almost the last ten years now who just went started university this spring. Okay. So yeah, autism can effectively be treated. Okay. Before we we talk, uh, we get so much onto the treatment conversation. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you, Jessica, why did you choose to work? Uh, only uh, on the autism disorder? What pushed you, what motivated you to, to go and serve under autism lights? Um, well, I've been working with kids with special needs for about seven years now. Mm -hmm. And I, as much as I feel like all kids with special needs deserve to get the treatment and education, I think that there is a lot of stigma and uh, misinformation about autism. Mm -hmm. And it's also the uh, fastest growing condition in the world right now. Okay. Uh, so I think that it really deserves to have someone work hard to make sure people are aware. Okay, so uh, Dr. Lincoln, at a treatment we have therapy, we have uh, medication, and we have specialists. Yeah. So what type of therapy works for what symptoms? The first thing is assessment. Mm -hmm. So when you know what your kid needs, then consult the actual experts. Mm -hmm. So if your child has speech and language deficits, consult a speech and language therapist. Okay. If your child has sensory needs, consult a se an occupational therapist. Okay. Of course, there are individuals out there again who are selling the quack therapies mm -hmm. kind of that don't work. For instance, diet interventions, stem cell interventions, those are interventions that are out there in the market that have no research to it. Mm -hmm. So the most effective interventions are are educational interventions because individuals with autism lack skills. There are deficits that they display. So we came from a conference in Thika this morning where we were working with the teachers on to teaching interventions. For instance, if your child doesn't speak, of course you need to put interventions. Interventions must be very specific to okay. the deficit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now when we, when now when we talk about uh, uh, therapy, mm -hmm. if probably your child does not speak, you go and look for a speech therapist. Mm -hmm. Are the autistic kids or autistic persons always under medication? Uh, At what yeah. point does one probably go off or have to get medication? Actually, there is no medication that works for autism. Mm -hmm. So what happens with autism? There are secondary characteristics to autism, like hyperactivity. Mm -hmm. So there is medication like Glispadol that is prescribed by most doctors, mm -hmm. but it doesn't treat autism. It treats the secondary characteristics. Okay. So in the United States, actually, the Food and Drug Administration hasn't approved any medication for autism. Mm -hmm. The FDA is the, is, approves all drugs that have to be consumed by the public in the United States. 
states. Okay. We don't have such an agency here. Mm -hmm. But going by the FDA recommendations, we really do not have medications for autism. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we know that April is a month uh, dedicated to autism awareness. Mm -hmm. And we know uh, second is a World uh, Autism Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. So what events, Jessica, do you have? What have you planned to, uh, uh, what events do you have or what plans do you have to make sure that you pass the right message that you wish to pass to people? Um, I mean, we have come here all the way from Boston mm -hmm. with a full schedule of events. Okay. Like uh, Dr. Lincoln said, we did a teacher training earlier today in mm -hmm. Pika. Okay. And we have a couple other parent trainings as well as media appearances. Okay. So what's your focus? What would you? What What is your focus? Because you're here in Nairobi and you you're dealing with parents and teachers who are dealing with autistic kids in the city. What about someone? in the rural areas how do they get helped how do they get to assess your information that you have with you um I, that's a great question because those are some of the areas that are going to be the places where it's most difficult for parents and children to get the services that they need okay so that's why i think we're doing as many media appearances as we can so mm -hmm. that people can see us and learn about autism so that they're more educated on what they can do and the best practices to help their child. Okay, so uh, Dr. Lincoln, we know that uh, it is uh, it is different uh, when dealing with a kid, with mm -hmm. a young person with uh, the autistic disorder and when dealing with an adult. So yeah. how, do, how, do, how do now you create a balance? How do you know what to say? Uh, how to probably, this, these are people who do not like a touch. They are not so good with touch. So how do you get to deal with these people without making them feel uncomfortable? Yeah, and, and that intervention starts at a very early age. Mm -hmm. So when you start interventions when one is an individual, you'll mm -hmm. be able when one is a little kid, mm -hmm. you'll be able to desensitize them to issues like touch, okay. personal space, and issues like those that are challenges. Mm -hmm. And you bring a very good issue here. On, we had an event at the Bombers of Kenya this past Sunday, mm -hmm. and we were able to come across parents of both little individuals and individuals way up into the 21s. And there is a very big service service divide within the t these two populations and that is not only here in Kenya that's a global phenomenon mm -hmm. we have very fun we have very good services in most places for z for the 2 to 18 okay. but past 18 we really don't have anything I mean I don't think that's for parents or individuals like us to do I think that's where we challenge our government to come in and put services mm -hmm. yeah. so and I was actually getting to the point whereby how can the government come in and help in making sure that these people living with autistic disorders uh, can assess uh, whatever it is that they want to assess, can be able to live like a normal person, can be able to work and all these things. Oh, now, what do you think the government can do to make it better than how it is right now? Yeah, the government needs to put in place resources. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did a training with teachers this morning and okay. they complained how little training they get. Mm -hmm. we, ha we, 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 worked, we, we met the teachers on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Everywhere in the, world, in the country we are hearing the same things. Mm -hmm. we are not trained, we are not trained. Mm -hmm. And a very good example, for one to be able to work with kids with autism, you have to be a board certified behavior analyst. Okay. Unfortunately, we have only two in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have only one rever board certified doctor Rebel clinician, that's me. Mm -hmm. Again, these are things that, these are skills that can be trained. Okay. I mean, there, there are some universities in Kenya that, I, that universities in the United States have tried to form collaborations, mm -hmm. but they didn't go through the, due to lack of government involvement. Okay. So governments need to provide resources, governments need to provide training, both for teachers and for the parents. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Jessica, what opportunities are there for uh, autistic persons? These are autistic persons. Somewhere they feel that I have this talent, but where do where do I get to showcase my talent? Where do I get to showcase my skills? So let's talk about opportunities and how can they tap them? Uh, people with autism have many skills and mm -hmm. many talents, mm -hmm. and they are more than capable of you know, working and finding places where they can succeed. Okay. Most of the time, uh, people with autism work best in uh, a position that has a lot of routine and has very repetitive tasks. Mm. So if there's a position like that you can uh, find, that would be the best. Okay. So are there any issues with diet? 
to autistic uh, persons? Is there something they should not eat? Is there a type of medication that probably they should not uh, consume? No, the, and this is a question that comes up over and over again. Mm -hmm. And again, I put that back to the quack therapists mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of parents with autism are spending so much money on yes. places where they should not. Mm -hmm. I, unless your child has some gastrointestinal issues, mm -hmm. there is no need to use a diet intervention. Going back to autism is a skills deficit. Mm -hmm. So if your child has autism, get some in, some educational interventions. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this in Vika this morning. I mean, your child can eat all the bananas they want okay. or all the wimby fra they want, mm -hmm. but that won't teach them skills. Okay. Yeah. So now, for parents living with autistic uh, children or uh -huh. autistic, whether it's a child or an adult, mm -hmm. how now, would you, what advice would you give to this uh, parent to be able to push their child to become a, a better person, to become someone who is needed in the society and someone who can contribute to the growth of the society? I mean, one of the best things that parents of children with autism can do is seek help from a, from a professional. Okay. That way, the professional can help a parent learn how to help their child build skills okay. and asking for help can be a really hard thing mm -hmm. but it is definitely the best okay stigmatization the stigmatization mm -hmm. is it, this is something that comes with a lot of things that happen yeah. so how now do we try to get rid of stigmatization to make people understand that this is not a curse this is not a, this is not witchcraft this is a person who needs love this is a person who requires to assess certain resources as you do how do we get rid of stigmatization as far as autism is concerned and that's what we are doing here creating awareness mm -hmm. as individuals become more aware of what's autism and what's not an autism mm -hmm. there will acceptance will become an issue. They okay. will just begin to accept. Mm -hmm. And autism is a very fast growing disability like Jessica mentioned here. One in 65 school going kids have autism. Okay. So there is a very high probability of everyone knowing a child with autism. Mm -hmm. So as we learn to uh, to us, as more kids come up with the diagnosis, who are our siblings, our brothers, our nephews, okay. acceptance, acceptance. People mm -hmm. will begin to accept this. And with acceptance, the stigma goes away. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Jessica, with the Autism uh, Lights uh, Organization, what achievements have you guys made so far? Uh, well, this is the second time that uh, Autism Lights has sponsored a trip here for Dr. Lincoln. It's my first one here in oh, Kenya. Okay. Um, but so we have had more and more events scheduled each time that we have come back mm -hmm. and worked here to uh, bring more awareness mm -hmm. about autism. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of trainings that are being offered online for people to be able to learn more so that they're educated. Probably yeah, you could give the sites. Maybe sites, you've talked about people being, uh, this educational information being offered online. Mm -hmm. Would you give a site where probably someone who is interested can go to? Yeah, you can always check the Facebook page for Autism Lights Incorporated, as well as autismlights.org. Uh, okay, we, before I yeah. cut you short, you want something to say? Yeah, okay. yeah we, we also, about two years ago, rather three years ago in 2016, we okay. published this manual, it's called the Parents Guide for Autism Parents in Kenya. It's also available on our website, and it addresses all these issues from my child has autism, what okay. do I do as okay. a parent? How do you take care of yourself? Mm -hmm. We address the stigma, all these issues. It's about a 36-page manual. Okay. We worked with other organizations. It actually has a list of all, all autism providers in the country as per 2016. Mm -hmm. So it's a very informative manual that parents can get access to. Because I always hear this, my child is diagnosed with autism, what do I do next? Okay. So that manual addresses most of those questions. Okay. Yeah. As you wind up, Jessica, a message to parents uh, or people living around uh, someone with autism, like uh, with autism uh, disorder. Your last comment on this. Okay. Uh, to any parents and people who know parents or children with autism, stay positive. There's hard work that needs to be done, but reach out to the people who are close to you so that they can support you. And if you know someone with autism, just lend a helping hand whenever you can. It's harder than you think to make sure that everyone is getting the needs that they, uh, that they need. Dr. Lincoln? Yeah, I, I tell parents all the time two things. If you suspect your child has autism, get an, get an assessment. Okay. Two, and the, just the last one, if your autism is not a deathbed, 
individuals with autism with the right treatments they can grow up to become valuable members of our community okay mm. thank you very much guys for really for the fighting the time to come and uh, speak to us on y254 tv and we wish you all the best as you continue creating the awareness and we hope that you're going to achieve uh, whatever that has brought you in kenya thank you very much guys for uh, tuning in and listening on tonight and if you're home with if you have an autistic person living around you love them, uh, be able to interact with these people in the right way and push them because you've heard from the doctor, you've heard from the consultant that these are people who can also contribute to the growth of this economy. Thank you very much. My name is Patricia Moriuki. Do have yourselves a very good night.